bandsaw versus laser versus CNC. Are they all the same? Not by any means. Does one take the place of the other? Not necessarily. So I'm going to do uh, the same project on a laser, on a CNC, and on my scroll saw. And what I'm doing is a sign that I made one of these uh, probably five years ago anyway um, on a scroll saw and it looks like this. And it hangs in the shop here so I am going to do the same thing uh, with a laser and just to show you can do it with a 10 watt laser and here you can see me cutting these pieces out on a uh, Algo Laser 10 watt, the MK2. Now this plan calls for the front of it to be three quarter inch and the back layer to be quarter inch. So yeah, you very easily cut quarter inch uh, plywood on a laser. I mean, as you saw in that 10 watt laser, it's a piece of cake. The front though, I'm making out of three quarter inch plywood. Now that's a whole different story on a laser. Even on the uh, longer B1, which is a 40 watt right here, I did some experiments with uh, some hardwood plywood and this is not the, the cheap stuff, this is the good stuff. And I went with uh, eight passes, I believe. Yes, I did. Eight passes at 100% power. And you can see, this is a cutaway view of it, how far I got down through there. But as the problem with cutting really thick material with a diode laser is as it goes down in, the beam you, you get out of focus. So unless you're going to be able to constantly move the laser head down and there's a, a limit to how far you can go, that's going to get wider and that piece you finally do cut out will have a concave side to it where it's, it has burned like this. So that doesn't work too well for three quarter inch. So in that case, uh, the laser isn't really going to work for the front layer. Uh, I did do a front layer here out of quarter inch plywood and it, it does layer together fine. It, I mean, it comes out absolutely perfect. But you don't get the depth. You don't get the 3D look, so to speak, as you do with uh, thicker front material. So one thing you can do with the laser, though, is mark your wood for where you're going to be scroll sawing it. This is a piece of that three-quarter inch hardwood plywood. So what I'm going to do is uh, put this on my laser and just trace the outline by making a line around it and then when I take it to the scroll saw I can just follow the lines. Uh, the way I used to do it before I had a laser or anything was you would print out your pattern on a piece of paper and use some spray glue or, or double blue tape and well, there's different ways you can do it. Most common though I would use a little light spray glue and glue that paper onto the surface of my material and then I would take it to the scroll saw and cut everything out. And when I got done, I took off the paper. But this way, I can lay this down, put my whole pattern on there, then just take it to the scroll saw. Okay, one thing you will have to do with a scroll saw is when you have all these internal areas, you need to drill potted holes through so you have a place to put your blade through. One of the disadvantages of a scroll saw is when you have a lot of these internal cuts is you need to move the blade every time. But I actually enjoy working on a scroll saw. I haven't done it in a while, been a little out of practice, so I don't have the smoothest cuts in the world. but. As you can see, it's coming along. Okay, ain't as good as it once was, as the song goes. That needs gonna need a little bit of sanding on it, but it's all cut out. Okay, each one of these is gonna need a, a back piece, like uh, this here, quarter inch plywood. Um, I could cut that on a scroll saw, I could cut it on the band saw, I could cut it on the laser. Well, just to save time and hassle, I'm going to cut them on the laser because that is like way faster.
Well, I noticed here as I cut that first one, I had all kinds of scorching, and I don't usually have that. So I stopped it, and I was check I checked the air pump, and the uh, air pump actually quit working. So I went and got another air pump stuck on there, and now my air assist is working better, and we don't have that scorching anymore. Well, there you can see the difference between uh, having the air assist and no air assist, or having the air assist and no air assist. I couldn't figure out why I was getting that scorching there, so as I said, I stopped and paused it, checked my air pump, and it was running, but it wasn't putting out any air, so I just swapped air pumps. Made a world of difference. Okay, now I need to re-rig and get this set up to do the, uh, this part on a CNC. Okay, so there's our cutout on the CNC. I'll get that off of there and we'll get some stuff put together. Okay, I got all three of these laid out here. Do a little bit of a comparison. This one here was done on scroll saw and I am a little bit out of practice so I wasn't quite as steady and accurate on that one as I should have been. Uh, it does need a little sanding. This one was done on the CNC. It needs minimal sanding. And this one here, of course, was done on the laser because it's a quarter inch. Uh, you wish you could take three of those and uh, stack them and get the same depth. But for uh, what I'm going to do here, we're just going to go with the single layer. So I'm going to get these painted and we'll get them put together and uh, do the final comparison there. And then we'll talk about time. Okay, we'll talk about time here between the three. On the uh, laser, uh, I cut all the back pieces on the laser and each one took four minutes. So that's... You know, you could have done it on the CNC, you could have done a scroll saw. I just did them all on the laser because it was that is absolutely the quickest. So the the front on the with the laser, that's quarter inch long plywood. That entire cut took uh, 12 minutes. On the scroll saw front plate took me about 30 minutes to cut that out and I probably should have taken my time a little more but I'm a little bit out of practice on the scroll so I haven't used it in a while and on the CNC how long did it take to do that on the CNC it took two hours so the CNC is obviously uh, going to take the longest to do and the laser is going to be the shortest and the scroll saw is going to be kind of right there in the middle now when you get into the finish points well, uh, which I'll show you after we're letting paint dry right now, but when I get these assembled, I'll show you the differences. On a CNC, you are not going to get a square inside corner because the bits are round. We do, I don't have any square bits. So you cannot get an inside square corner. Outside square corners, yes. Inside, no. On a laser, you can get both. No problem. On a scroll saw, you can get both if you're good. You can get both as well provided you're not using a spiral blade you won't get a perfect corner if you're using a spiral blade but that's a uh, scroll saw talk there uh, another thing I'll mention is uh, where did this pattern come from this pattern came from a website there's a fellow by the name of Steve Good he has a fantastic website for uh, scroll sawing and if you're into scroll sawing at all or even if you're not you need to check his site out he's got some pretty neat stuff there of uh, this particular plan can be downloaded from his site for free. It's a PDF and you can uh, take that PDF and print it out and then stick it to your project and scroll saw it that way or you can uh, put your piece on a laser and make the pattern in the laser and just follow the lines. There's a lot of different ways to do it but uh, you need to check out his website and I'll put a link in the description on his site. So as soon as the paint dries, we'll get things put together and we'll see how they look. Okay, so I ran out of yellow paint, so they didn't get their second coat. However, uh, you can get the good idea here of what we've got. So once again, this one here was cut on the laser. This one was done on the scroll saw. This one was done on the CNC. Now on the background here, I have three palm trees. The one over here on the right was done on scroll saw, three quarter inch pine. Uh, these other two are from half out of uh, half inch cedar. This one here was done on the CNC. This was done on the laser. These are both the same pattern right here. 
So you can see with a laser, you're going to get them very, very sharp points like this, whereas they're going to be more rounded uh, when done on a CNC. So, and of course, when you're doing with a scroll saw, I took my time on that one, so that one came out a little better than my little guy here. Uh, as long as you take your time and follow the pattern accurately and use short blades, you can get some really, really good results. None of these are sanded, it's just as they came right off. So there's my take on scroll saw versus laser versus CNC. Each tool has its place. Um, this has come up on our Wednesday night live stream several times about, you know, well, a laser is better than a CNC. No, a CNC is better than a laser. And uh, scroll saws are just obsolete. Nobody uses them anymore. Well, I do. And I know quite a few other people that still use their scroll saws, especially on thick material. Uh, laser does have the advantage of being faster most of the time. It, you know, again, it depends on the project and it depends on what you're doing. So there's uh, kind of an overview of the differences between the three, and I know there's going to be a, always going to be an ongoing debate over this, and including the one whether using a CNC or a laser is really woodworking, or even if you're using a scroll saw, if it's really woodworking, you should be using a coping saw and a little vise. Well, no thanks. Modern tools are a blessing, if you ask me. So at any rate, if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'll put a link in the description for the different things I use and a link to Steve Good's website if you'd like to make that little retired sign. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.